Hi, I'd like to show you my DIY spin coater. A spin coater is a device used for putting a very precise thin coat of liquid on a flat surface on the order of a few micrometers. They're used a lot in the semiconductor industry, for example to spread an even layer of photoresist onto a silicon wafer or PCB for etching. The principle is pretty straightforward. You dispense some of the liquid onto the center of the substrate you want to coat and then you spin it up. The liquid will get flung out from the center and it'll spread out. A lot of it will fly off once it reaches the edge, but some of it will stick to the surface. It's because of this balance between the centrifugal force and the surface tension that you get a very thin, even thickness across the entire surface. The process is very repeatable. The only major factors that determine the coating thickness are the viscosity of the liquid and the spin speed. So how consistent you can get this thickness really depends only on how accurately you can control the RPM of the motor. For me, the reason I needed a spin coater is I was doing an electro wetting project where I wanted to put a very thin coating of silicon rubber onto a PCB in a way that's repeatable so I could do multiple experiments and not have to worry about the thickness affecting anything. Professional off-the-shelf spin coaters are very expensive, costing thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars. I figured I could make my own for less than 100 euros. I considered using just a simple brushed DC motor, but thanks to the drone and RC car community, high quality brushless motors and their speed controllers are really cheap and easily available these days. From reading the literature, it seemed the RPM range I was looking for was between 500 and 6000 ish. Most drone motors spin much faster than this, so I had to actually take care to pick a slower motor, like below 2000 kV to make sure it could spin slow enough without stalling. To hold the PCB in place, commercial spin coders often use a vacuum chuck to basically suck on the underside of the PCB to keep it in place. This involves creating an airtight seal in a spinning platform, and that's just something I really wasn't looking forward to doing. To keep it simple, I noticed that some brushless motors have tapped holes in the rotor, so I figured I could just 3D print or laser cut a platform that fits my PCB and then bolt that down into the rotor and use more screws to clamp down the PCB. For the enclosure, I laser cut some plywood um, because I have access to a nice laser cutter at my local hacker space and plywood is cheap. I ended up going for a design where the front, top and back are all a single curved piece. I cut a dense pattern of alternating slots using the laser cutter. It's a technique that's often used to make plywood flexible. The whole thing is held together using only four screws, two in the back and two in the front, and I only need to remove the front two to basically curl open the whole thing. While I was waiting for the rest of the parts to arrive, I got started on the user interface. I tried a few different approaches and I ended up writing an update loop that runs different draw functions based on where the user currently is. Kind of inspired by how the React framework works in JavaScript. The final interface is simple, but I feel it's intuitive. In principle, precise speed control of a motor is not too difficult. It's your textbook example of a PID feedback control loop, but you need a way to read out the RPM from the motor. The EEC is capable of doing this, but getting that data out of the EEC is not so straightforward, and it ended up being the most time-consuming part of the project by far. After tuning some of the PID values, the motor was humming away and staying at the specified RPM beautifully, even under various finger-induced loads. To finish up the build, I added some foam to dampen vibrations, 3D printed the splash guard and the spinning platform to hold the PCB with hold down screws. For the lid, I used a piece of transparent acrylic someone left in the scrap pile at my local hacker space. I think it's been there for a long time because the protective foil did not want to come off cleanly. In my impatience, I ended up scratching the acrylic quite a lot. All in all, I'm very happy with the result. Even using the pretty viscous Shure 40 silicone rubber I have, spinning at 6000 RPM for a few minutes leaves a very nice shiny layer with no visible imperfections. Ooh, shiny. Now this is definitely a first version and there are some improvements that come to mind. The enclosure could be stiffer, the electronics need some tidying up, and there's still some vibrations that could be dampened out. But it works! I've been using it for a number of months and it has served me well. If you'd like to create your own spin coder, there are more details in the Hackaday project page in the description below. Thanks for watching.